every year around Halloween I get excited about that time of year because that's when uh, activity really picks up and bucks start chasing does and uh, it's just an exciting time to hunt and back in July this year I talked to an outfitter and he invited me to come out to Oklahoma to his place the weekend after Halloween and I was really excited about that and looking forward to it uh, the next few months and um, I called Bo and he, he was he had, was available to come film me so he met me up in Oklahoma and we uh, uh, we went in that first morning and um, it was actually a pretty decent spot uh, you could tell some cows were out in the field but the outfitter said that you know they were uh, the deer were moving uh, in that area and we sat there that morning and uh, didn't see anything so we got down I was kind of excited to see what other spots were were set uh, for the hunt and uh, we scouted a couple of different areas and every time I saw a place that looked really good um, I said well do you have a, a set hung in here and, and he had no other sets hung so um, I said well I guess we could set in the same spot this evening as we did this morning and, and he was going to go out and and hang another spot for us so we uh, we sat in the same spot that evening and it just got worse I mean uh, cows came in and then I think we had seven horses under our stand at one point and it was just ridiculous so we came down early and and uh, decided we would just walk into the wind and kind of walk the property and and see if we couldn't you know spot and stock something and sure enough when we started walking uh, you can see on camera Bo was filming me and then filming these cows just following us and said man this is this is really ridiculous I hope our spot you know tomorrow is better and, so we came in the next morning and uh, the outfitter had hung kind of an old uh, platform stand that was just, it didn't look good, but Bo climbed up the tree and it shifted on him and he almost fell out of the tree. And I said, man, let's just, let's get down. Um, and Bo could tell that I was frustrated and, and uh, he said, let's just go to Arkansas and hunt my place in Arkansas. And I had two days left of a three day weekend and um, we waited till it got daylight and uh, then hiked back to the truck and, and just packed up at the hotel and, and drove to Arkansas. And uh, he told me about this place that he had that he called the, the, the Pinch. And I was like, what's a Pinch? And uh, in his southern accent, he was saying the Pinch, uh, the, the Springtown Pinch. And it's where two fields come together at the corners, separated by uh, about 60 or 80 yards of, of two wood lots that came together at a corner and there was a 60 or 80 yard funnel right there and you could just tell deer had to move through that area so they weren't going out into the field and I thought man this is really going to be a good spot so um, I just had one day to hunt uh, so the first evening we uh, we climbed up and, and I filmed Bo and we were just kind of observing that evening and and uh, it's legal to, to bait in Arkansas and, and Bo had, had some cameras out with some bait sites and uh, after we climbed down that evening, uh, we put some corn uh, back in the woods um, in front of the, the two stands that he had set. And uh, I walked in to, to pour the corn out. And, uh, when it was pitch dark, I walked in and had no idea where the stands were. So it was kind of funny that um, I was just kind of pouring corn out wherever. And we climbed back in the next morning. We got in really early, decided to sit all day, and uh, the temperature dropped. A lot. I think it was uh, uh, 25 degrees when we, we went out there that morning, and uh, so we uh, we climbed up. And once it got daylight, could see that I had accidentally poured out a pile of corn about 16 yards right in front of our stand in a shooting lane. So uh, we had a small buck come in that morning, and he was chasing some does. And and uh, after he gave up on the does, he walked right to the corn and was broadside. And, it took about everything I had to not shoot this buck, even though he was probably not even a hundred inches. And uh, so we uh, uh, we passed on him, and and uh, we uh, we watched some more does running around uh, that morning. And then the wind picked up, and I thought, man, this isn't good. Uh, the wind picked up really hard. It was blowing really hard from about nine to four o'clock all day long, and we were kind of frustrated and tired. And, I was sitting there at about four o'clock. We were both just kind of zoning out. I had my, my head down in my hands and I just happened to look up and this buck came in from, uh, I probably saw him at about 20 yards walking straight towards our stand. And I tapped Bo on the, the leg and said, shoot her, shoot her. And uh, he 
wasn't chasing any does. He was just kind of cruising through there. And then, uh, uh, sure enough, he beelined straight to the corn that I accidentally poured out in that spot the night before. Uh, he just he walked straight to the corn, broadside of me, and quartering away a little bit, took the shot. I think it was 16 or 17 yards. Passed through, blood all over the arrow. Um, just knew he was going to be dead, you know, real close. And so we sat there for another hour and a half or so before it got dark and switched spots with Bo. And he passed on a handful of, of deer. The, the woods really lit up after I shot that buck. And uh, we kept seeing does walk in, a couple of button bucks. And uh, Bo was really hoping to shoot uh, another buck that he had had on camera and had been chasing for a while. And nothing showed up for Bo to shoot, so we got down. and. He had uh, texted his brother, to, uh, Ben, to come in and help us with the tracking job, and he got there, and once we found the arrow, there was just no blood, and um, we looked around for about 30 or 40 minutes trying to find blood, and finally we went back to the arrow, and, uh, got down on our hands and knees, and, and started finding little blood drops smaller than your fingernail, and so uh, we tracked that to a fence where the buck had, had jumped a fence, and after that we just had no blood, so we just kind of fanned out, and. Uh, looked around for, for a while and it was really kind of disheartening. You know, you shoot a nice buck and then you can't find blood and I had to go home that evening so uh, we were kind of thinking maybe it would be better for me to just go home and, and for them to come back in the daylight the next day but we kept at it and, and uh, Ben was pretty determined to help me find this buck and sure enough after a while I, I heard him yell over at Bo to turn the camera on and I knew then that uh, uh, we had you know, we'd found this buck. So he stayed away from it and let me walk up to it and find it. Um, and it was just, I was just ecstatic to, to find this buck. One day to hunt in Arkansas and, and we got it done in the Springtown Pinch. And uh, it just, you hunt bucks sometimes all season long and, and don't get a shot opportunity. And we had that one day and, and uh, got it done in one day, 12 hour set. And it's pretty awesome when you, you have a friend say, you know, hey, come down here, you're having a hard weekend, hunt my land, shoot one of my bucks, and um, it was just, it was great to, you know, have a friend to do that to you and for you, and um, hopefully next year I'll get to go back down there and shoot another one of his bucks.